So guys, you're probably wondering where we get all our welding and fabrication done. I keep going on about Tom Upton, um, but we've just arrived at Tom's place to pick up the Cosworth head. So we're going to introduce you to him. And the business is called Stop and Weld. Um, Tom is absolutely fantastic. So the story is with Tom, um, we got to meet him through his, from his dad really. His dad was, his dad's had us for a few quid in the past. He's this, he was this local snap-on dealer. He's now retired. Tom was also a snap-on dealer. Um, but he's retired and gone into fabrication and welding and he's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, any welding and fabrication we have done now, we get done by Tom. Um, he's fairly local to us, so um, it's just a case of dropping it up there and he gets it done almost immediately. So yeah, if you've got anything to be done guys, um, or any welding or whatever, specialist welding, you can easily send it to us and we will uh, bring it up to Tom at Stop and Weld. But let's get in there and see how he's got on with this um, Cosworth head. So this is where all the magic happens, and there's the man himself, Mr. Tom Upton. Hi, Hello, Lee. Tom. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. I keep going on about to everyone who you are and keep sending welding down and what have you, but you do they've never met you. Many like most of the people I go things. on about, I never, never, never really come to meet them. So um, this is your place. Yes, a bit empty at the moment. I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so... Uh... How long are you on holiday for, mate? A week? Not too long, I no, hope. No, only a week, yeah. Oh, that's all right. Only allowed a week. What we got going on in here, mate? Got a Vauxhall Nova, which is rare as ends teeth. So the Nova's a, going to be a stage rally car. Stripped back, obviously. The tub, the turreted, the rear arches there. I think they're Escort turrets. Oh, yeah. Um, they had like two different cages in before, so you can see where the squares have been cut, the old footplate's been cut out, so I've got yet to build them back up. And you put in a cage in it. Yeah, that's so that's some of the main tubes. And then behind you over there is the pile of other tubes. So it's quite a big cage that's going in it. This is a pre-built cage um, yeah. from Hockley Motorsport. So I'm just doing the, like, tigging this in. Okay. Um, but I do have the JD Model 32 aerobic hydraulic. So I, and then I've got Bentec on the computer as well. Yeah. So a full paid for Bentec. So I can design the cages. Nice. If you want something that, I did one on, because some, Vehicles don't have cages available pre-built like this Nova does because it's quite popular. Yeah. I did one in a Mariva the other day. Oh, okay. A Mariva? You can't buy one. No one oh, makes really? Because well, no one wants a cage in a Mariva, do no. they? No, well, why did he want a cage in a Mariva? It was an autocross car, but... All right, fair he, enough. He wanted a cage and no one... You can't just buy one off the shelf, no, so... No, So you get asked to do fairly obscure stuff then. Yeah, weird stuff. Weird stuff all the time. Um, the Mini is a historic rally car, so that's... Now, I didn't realise until the last time I came that you got involved with this sort of stuff, mate, but this is... Um... I don't advertise it because it's, uh, it's not fun. Um, right, OK. Well, it's, no, it's not, it's, it's not too bad. So if someone approaches you and you've got nothing else going on, you Yeah, maybe once this is gone, I'll, 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 someone will probably bring me another one similar, hopefully. Maybe. We'll and you see. maybe have put in um, additions to the E30. I have threatened you with that, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. how we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is full, like, it's had a floor, bulkhead inner wings, outer wings, the works. Fairly just extensive, and, that. Got a cage to go in it as well. Historic cages are different to normal cages. Like normal cages, you'd like gusset between the cage and like the A pillar. Yeah. On historic, you can't, you have to have like the certain things you can't and can have. And this frame inside, Tom, did you put all that in there, did you? It's just a frame to try and keep it. It'd been so bodged and patched. There was nothing, there's no like datum to work from. No, that's it. So it just had to be literally stripped, cut, put the, the subframes in the right place. Yeah. Use the subframes as datums for the rest of the, for the floor to go to and that sort of thing. And we see loads of exhaust here, buddy. You do exhaust, power flow exhaust now. So yeah, power flow is, power flow has got the sort of reputation of um, like fast fit tire places. It's kind of nice to have somewhere that it's a fab shop. Yeah, like sure. A, yeah. Like a motorsport fabrication shop that's doing that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's not just bodged together by a tire fitter. No, and you'll certainly be doing ours when our car's finally done. Yeah. Ideal, mate, but more importantly, you do um, aluminium welding, which is- Cast, um, cast welding. Cast welding, is yeah. that what it is, so, is it? Well, because I do, obviously, cast iron stuff as well. Yeah. Um, which I've done a few for yourself, for quite a few cast iron bits. That's right, yeah. Um, cast iron's all about heat treating. Okay. So preheat, um, I've got thermal imaging camera, so I can see what sort of, what the heat spreads like on the part. Yeah. And I got a bucket, a metal box full of dry sand. You have to have like oh, super right, dry yeah. sand, like kiln dried sand. Oh, I see. So you'll heat it, you'll do the 
repair, yeah. you'll then have to sometimes heat to get it all back up to the same temperature and then it'll go in the sand oh, okay. and it'll stay in there for like six, seven hours oh, good, just yeah. to cool down really slowly, otherwise you just to prevent cracking really. Yeah, sure. I think so far with all of your stuff I've done, all the cast stuff, I don't think anything's cracked yet. No, it hasn't, no. Which is nice. No. And, then, and, it's yeah, all, the, and you can machine it nicely afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but some things, especially the cast iron stuff, it's just not available anymore. Yeah. Like, it's broken, normally you'd buy a new one, but if it's from something really old, it's just, you cannot get it. No, this is the trouble. So your option is repair or, yeah. or don't do the job. And it's like it was with the, you know, the, some of the cylinder heads we get now. You just, it's like that Cosworth, which we're here to pick up. That's, you're two grand for a second hand one anyway. And then you, you know guarantee what it's going to be mm. like. So, um, yeah, it's a bloody godsend for us, really. That was pretty bad detonation on that Cosworth head. It I was bad, yeah. We've seen that, you know, a good few times before, but not to that extent. Mm. Um, so how did it go? It wasn't too bad. It's, um, with the, the detonation, it's very, very porous. Okay. And obviously, um, being a cylinder head, you get fuel and oil and whatever impregnated into it. Yeah. So it takes a few passes to sort of um, burn, obviously die grind it out. Yeah. Uh, the die grinding burrs I use are, are really big, wide fluted ones. Oh yeah. Specific for aluminium, so they don't load. Okay. So I was, um, I was pretty worried about these areas here where it's sort of close to the insert. Does that make a difference? Well, you gave me like a sacrificial valve. Yeah. So I basically passed that across each one. Yeah. And the idea is to try and just take the heat away. Oh, okay. Um, but I think it's done. It should be... I was going to say visibly. You're going to have to give it a I'm, skim. I'm pretty impressed with that. Because that's um, the only... Um, but they're never going to be like stacked to dimes on, on cast. It's no. just... And it takes so, I mean, I have to like run over it with the gas to try and like get a bit of preheat in there. Yeah. Don't try and do much preheat, but it needs some just because it's such a vast amount of aluminium that's got to be heated up to yeah. get it to melt. And when, you, when you're sort of melting this, do you notice crap coming out of the aluminium? Yeah, so it, it, it literally boils, you can see like bubbles coming up, and, and every single time it's oil, and sometimes it's just a really bad casting as well. Yeah. Just, just the, the casting from the factory is porous. This one, this one looked like it had been welded before because it seems sort of excess weld at the back here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't, it's you... not one that we've done before, is no, it? No, certainly not, no. But this is an Escort Cosworth head and they're just, um, they're like ends teeth to get. So, yeah. I looks, mean, this is the only one you've good, bought mate. me that's like debt. The other yeah. ones that you've had before, like the waterways all corroded away. This is it, yeah. People... Um, I much prefer the waterways corroded away. They're, oh, really? uh, they're a lot. I just feel like a fire ring is like yeah, pressure on me. Mean. Yeah, <laughs> no, do you no. know what I mean? Well, like, to be honest with you, as long as it's, once we machine fine. it back, as long as it's, you know, even the odd blowhole, we can sort of yeah. fill in or let you have it back. Yeah. But and, the, it was really deep. Like, I had to go like a good sort of four mil down oh, really? with the, the bird to try and get, you know, it needs to be fresh metal. So. Well, it looks pretty good, mate. So hopefully when we give it a lick over, it will hold a gasket. That's the idea. That is the plan. It's nice to meet you, Tom. No worries. Um, have a lovely holiday, mate. I will, don't worry. I won't, <laughs> I won't be thinking about you at all. No, I'm sure you won't. <laughs> right, guys, the Mark III Focus RS. This engine is not like the usual troublesome uh, Mark II, which was a five-cylinder Volvo lump, basically. This is a 2.3 Duratec that they use in the Mark III. So this is the latest variant of the Focus RS. Now, this belongs to a customer of ours, Paul. Um, and he's bought the car with an engine issue, a known engine issue. This is a, a tuned engine or a built engine that's got the um, 0.5 oversize Wozner pistons in it. It's got the I-beam con rods from PEC, um, competition bearings, standard crankshaft, standard oil pump, etc. But it has been worked on, it has been bored and machined, etc. So apparently it's had a restriction on the collapsed oil pickup pipe which has obviously starved the main and then caused the engine to be knocking so Paul has give us the short motor to strip and investigate what the issue was so what the findings first of all oil pump so we stripped the oil pump the actual body of the oil pump doesn't look too bad although there is scoring down the bottom um, and the impeller and etc is fairly worn so we're going to need a new oil pump which obviously we would replace anyway, as it's had some bearing issue. Um, these are the main bearings. You can see here that it has obviously starved this main. 
and melted the bearing by the looks of it, which has then gone on to starve the rods. Um, you can see number three and number one, strangely, have got very hot, so they have spun the bearings. The very strange thing is number one has got hot, um, but number one journal on the crank measures okay. All the mains measure okay, even though this has happened. Um, this number four main does measure okay. Um, if you actually look at the crank, look at all the journals, it looks absolutely fine. Although this journal is about 15 thou down on the standard size. And this one here is about 12 thou down. These two are okay, which surprises me on this one really because that rod is so bad. So um, the thrusts look okay. Um, we have talked up the mains caps. It's got, um, whether these are ARP, I'm not sure, but it's got a stud and nut conversion in the mains. I measured the housings and they actually measure absolutely fine. So I'm not sure whether this has been line honed in the past when it was stripped before, because it's obviously been a competition build. Um, the rod housings are unsalvageable, unfortunately, so we're going to need a new set of rods. So what we're going to go for is the Bridgeway rods from Mar Motorsport, um, but the I-beam, they do an I and a H-beam. The I-beam are quite considerably lighter. This engine is um, susceptible for failure if it isn't lightened, so if you're pushing big power. So Paul wants to go about 530 horsepower. Um, so. The Wasner pistons are absolutely fine. As I say, it's a pretty fresh build, really. There's no damage done to these whatsoever. They measure perfect, um, and the bores are absolutely bang on. So all we're going to do is deglaze it, probably put a new set of rings in there, go for the I-beam com um, comrods, competition bearings, and a brand new crankshaft. We're not even going to attempt to do anything with this. As I say, that's 15 thou down already. If it isn't bent, which will be a miracle, um, you can only get 0.25, which is 10 thou big ends in the competition. So that's what we're going to do, guys. You can see this oil jet here, for some reason, has got broke. So these are only a standard item. So we've got to get a new one of those. Um, obviously, de a thorough deglaze on the block. Um, we're going to face the block face and do a dummy build anyway to get our piston protrusion correct. Um, you can see maybe once we've cleaned these pistons up we might need to take a little bit off the top of the pistons i'm not sure yet so we're just in search for a, a crankshaft i think paul has been in touch with puma speed who normally supply these um, genuine crankshafts but they are waiting a delivery so paul's got to ring back wednesday to see when they're going to do a delivery well guys thanks ever so much for watching today's video unfortunately it's going to be monday's video now when we get to face the cosworth to see if that welding has been successful and we can crack on with that the reason is is because we've got this v8 stag block on the um on the mill which is going to be on there most of the day stay tuned for the next video because we are going to be putting together this golf r engine now we've got all the bits laid out as you can see um but until monday's video guys thanks a lot for watching and we will see you then have a great weekend Cheers, guys.